Hi there, my name is Leo and I'm an online teacher for German on italki.com. I make this video with the intention to use it as an introduction for my students there, um, but I think it's hopefully as well um, very useful to other people, so I want to put it on YouTube as well. Um, this is generally how I think learning language works the best. Um, but of course, everybody wants to learn a little differently. Um, everybody has different opinion about it. Um, so just take out what you need. Use it as a toolbox and try, you know, self-propelled learning is also something very, very crucial in language learning process. So therefore, just try to take everything out what you need and create your own way of, of learning, of course, a little bit. So I very strongly believe in learning by habits, you know, really in the sense of that you should pick a daily time frame and be very um, process oriented. You know, a lot of people, for example, go to evening schools. They go there like once a week, like one day, um, and are there for two or three hours in the evening. No, and they um, expect there to be fed something and then go back home and uh, forget about the language and then the next week the same again. I don't think it works like this. You know, um, and in this sense, really, I would advise you to pick a base habit and um, do it every single day. You know, scientifically, we need more or less 30 days in order to create a new habit. We need more or less 66 days in order to make it effortless. So, um, for example, if you would say that you want to do one hour of German every day, I would also advise you to basically big pick a base habit that feels like not enough. You know, for example, um, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If it feels ridiculous, it's perfect. Because what you first of all want to do is basically avoiding willpower. You want to avoid w discipline because discipline is not something very efficient in the long term, in my opinion. You know, the, it's just not stable enough. So, therefore, we try to 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 construct the whole process by using habits, of course. So, for example, you say 15 minutes every day, okay? And if you want to do more, you do more. You know, so a little bit in this sense. I would also advise you to basically um, do your habits in the morning always. Because you know, willpower is a finite resource. Uh, we try to we try to, to to basically avoid it, but of course, of course, we need a little bit in order to start the process. So basically, try to um, do it always in the morning because willpower is still full then, and of course, in the evening it's depleted. So it's a little bit more stable to do it like this, of course. Um, also, the same time and same space would be a really good idea. Also, same clothes, but that's maybe a step too far, no? So, um, in really in the sense of, um, you know, like if we have base habits like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, what we really want to do is basically um, skipping warm up time, you know, in the sense of that if you go somewhere and you always do the same thing at the same time and the same space, your brain adapts basically to the circumstance. So, our brains very strongly adapt to circumstances. So, if you are there and you always do the same thing, for example, you study always the same topic in the library, um, your brain is like, ah, this time, this space, it's probably time for this. So this allows us basically to skip warm up time to make the habits much more efficient. Also try always to use also a keyboard with it, basically, because, um, you know, like um, we wanna, especially if we have 15 minutes, 20 minutes every day, uh, you know, we, we want to make the habits a little bit more efficient, of course. And if you use a keyboard, if you skip warm up time, that makes, change a day of course but in the long term you know in one week in one month and six months this makes a huge difference in the long term and we really want to create long-term habits of course so also combining uh, your new habits you want to create with old habits you already have is a very powerful thing to do so basically in the sense of for example that the word after something very magical there you know like for example after i come back from from work i do this after i get out of the shower i do that after i make myself a coffee i do this you know a little bit like this so um, just combining it with old habits you already have. A very important thing is as well that you don't expect your habits to succeed in the first place. Of course not. You know, like we first of all want to reach 30 days. We want to reach 66 days. If you instantly make it, perfect. But expect failure as well. You know, failure. That it's part of the process basically. You know, um, in the sense of that it's like everything in life. No, it's up and down and up and down. Of course you will skip some days. Of course you will uh, one day not be able to do it or like just not in the mood or whatsoever. Um, one important principle is basically that if that happens, try to make it your highest possible priority the next day to do your habit actually. And as well, if you have those two days or three days where you don't do your habit actually, try never ever to be hard on yourself, you know. This would be also something very counterproductive for the process. Really in the sense of that if you're hard on yourself, you create a lot of stress, you create a lot of tension and you attack yourself, you're less likely to be in the mood to do it actually next day. Always watch out that you have a very nice process, you know, in the sense of, you know, if it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. 
our responsibilities as language learners are really, um, first of all, starting the process, second of all, keeping the process up, and third of all, protecting our interest, curiosity, and fun, because this is such a strong fundamental part, basically, for the process. Yeah? So in, in this sense, really try to, to be nice to yourself. So we don't want to be hard on ourselves, but basically what we want to be is very analytical about the whole thing. So be really your own kind of habit scientist in some way. Be very the fruit kind of person perspective um, and try to, to, to watch yourself doing it. And if, if, you, if you don't do it for one day, if you don't do it for two days, that's very nice data in order to improve the process. No? So, so use those days actually to, to improve the process. Think about like if you have one day, you didn't do it, no? Think about it. what environmental circumstances would you be able to change in order to make it easier for you to, to basically do your habits. And then try to adapt, maybe reducing the amount of time, maybe changing the place, maybe putting your phone on in another room while you do it, no? So so, so a little bit like this, adapt, be, be creative, be flexible, and uh, you will see that this pays off um, big time, basically. So what habits do we want to create, no? So, um, First of all, the most important thing is probably that we want to create a, a, a phrase slash vocabulary habit, no? in the sense of that um, use basically a space repetition system in order to have a very nice vocabulary process. And if you're still in the beginning of a language, be aware that vocabulary is in the beginning very strong, determining the speed, how fast you can move with the language. No? So really in the sense of that um, if you have 400 words or if you have 500 words, this makes a huge difference in terms of combination possibilities. So try to have a little focus on this in the beginning, of course. No? So we certainly want to employ a space repetition system that's basically just a system which is designed to bring something into your long-term memory. And um, for example, uh, like some examples would be Memrise, Lingvist, Duolingo, Anki, Quizlet. Um, there is a lot more around, of course. Um, Toastmasters is also cool. Um, they, they are basically all relying on the same principle. Um, I would uh, advise you to pick something with context always, because context is crucial. Uh, also with vocabulary, if you have a verb, there's tons of different meanings, of course. And um, we want to learn those meanings, of course, as well. And you can do that by learning in context. If you're just starting out with the language, I would um, maybe advise you to use a combination of two or three different platforms. First of all, there is a course on memory which is called Learn German for Polyglots. It is actually not the most precise name in my opinion. It's what it actually is, is, is a basically a, a, a German course, a very practical German course actually. You know, in the sense of that they try to give you the tools to communicate and use the language as fast as possible and they have a nice guidance as well. Um, also it's like 104 hours I think of course content, so it's a really huge course and a very, very good one to use in order to, to instantly start using German and that's also something you really want to do. Um, and I would uh, advise you actually to combine it with a platform which is, you know, there's also a course on Memrise which is called the 5,000 most frequent words sorted by frequency. And this is of course a very powerful thing to do because if you have 500 words in a language you have almo almost five, uh, you know, 50% of, of, of every text. You know, so having a frequency based approach towards vocabulary is something very powerful to do, of course. But uh, in this course on Memrise, we don't have context. And of course, context is something crucial, as we said. So really try to um, have context always. And um, very cool platforms are, for example, Closemaster or Lingvist.com because they have context and have a frequency-based approach as well. So they're a little bit like a combination between Duolingo and um, this course on Memrise, the 5000 words course, of course. So this is something very good to use to begin with because it's a very efficient approach to start with a language. I normally like to use Memrise very much for very specific things and basically for, for example, if you want to improve the German number system, uh, you, you have there a course um, for it, you invest five um, minutes every day for a long period of time and you invest once like 30 minutes or something. And then you will be able to have the number system under control very, very fast. So that's a very, very powerful thing to do basically for specific things. And also the most important part of Memrise are the community created courses, in my opinion. Um, those are awesome. Also like the, the possibility to very easily create your own content kind of things um, on your own is something very powerful as well. I would also advise you to have something like this, you know, like just a, li a little notebook basically, where you, first of all, from the one side, uh, I would advise you to write down uh, phrases that you that you like a lot. You know, not content that you don't know, this would be full very fast, of course, um, but things that you have actually emotional um, connection with. You know, really in the sense of that, for example, ah, I, want, I want to use this phrase, I, I, I really like this phrase. So try to find content that you enjoy and that you want to start using and write it down. Don't worry so much about if you don't always look into this, because the writing process itself is already important. But um, yeah, 
this is something very good to have always with you um, and uh, maybe to look into if you if you want to revise something or you just want to see where you, where you came from no another very good idea is basically that you turn the book around no and then you have it basically from the other side and use it as a situative um, rotate yeah notebook may maybe you know in the sense of that you basically write down situations where communication was not really smooth if you are already in germany on, on the target country more or less um you could for example write down yeah I'm, i was in a bakery i tried to do this i want to do this it didn't really work out very good so um why didn't it work or what could you do to improve it and then for example reaching out to a teacher and asking what you can specifically uh, train to make it easier for you for example finding the right vocabulary finding the right phrases you may try to make every situation nice for you the second habit we would like to create is actually a practical slash control process habit really in the sense of that um, we want to use a platform like uh, Hello Talk or Tango.net. Those are a little bit like WhatsApp for language learning, you know, really in the sense of that you write to native speakers, they reply to you and help you, and you do hopefully the same, you know, if you're uh, native in Tango, basically. So this is a very, very awesome thing because it allows us to have a nice control process. You know, for example, if you learn very nice phrases on Lingvist or Closemaster whatsoever, and uh, you then instantly start using those, and like five native speakers tell you five times, uh, don't use it like this, use it like this, you will be very fast in improving this, no? Uh, also, like for very basic principles, like verb positioning, which is, for example, very crucial for German, um, this is something very nice. Um, it's, it's in general a very good process as well to, to give you, of course, like uh, not only to correct but also to give you security with the things you use you know if you use a five five times a phrase right you are very likely to be also very uh, sure about your usage uh, of the phrase in german for example you know so that's a very very powerful thing to do as well it allows us of course to practice small talk skills a lot which is awesome because um of course if you have this a lot of phrases already in place and fixed and you are not you know that they are right this gives you a little bit more freedom to move around in the language in general more freely so um, those systems are very awesome for those things, um, but of course they have two big problems. No, um, basically, first of all, um, the biggest problem is probably how the community uses those platforms. So um, most people download those platforms, like they 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 see the app in the app store, for example, um, and they think like, oh, what an awesome tool! I will use this a lot. They use it for two days and they lose the process. No. So really try to do it a little bit in a different way as well. You know, like we like Memrise, Lingvist, Duolingo, all those platforms for, for the vocabulary uh, have basically day counters that really want you to create habits. Hello Talk and Tandem and some other habits we would like to create don't. So uh, also try to um, go to the App Store and type habits and you will find a lot of applications which allow you to basically track every habits you want to create. No? So in this sense, um, but very, very nice. You can also apply those habit plan principles to a lot of other habits you want to create, of course. But this is something I do at the moment, for example. Um, so really try to track everything and make it measurable. If you make it measurable, you are having much more influence on it, basically. You know? So also f be aware, just you know, to, to, to avoid the kind of uh, two days and out principle, um, just select the base habit again. Select something ridiculous. Maybe like five minutes a day, maybe ten minutes a day, maybe one sentence a day, whatsoever. Like it should feel ridiculous. Um, use it every day. Focus on thirty days. Focus on sixty-six days. You know all these principles we talked about. Uh, better to say I talked about apply there as well, of course. So really try to build up a habit. Be process orientated and not so much outcome orientated. Um, in this sense, really, and of course, like use those five minutes or ten minutes basically to write to new people if you don't have anybody to reply to or to answer messages you have already. You know, so. Um, a bit in this sense and of course after some time you will uh, reach out to the kind of core community which uses those platforms a little bit more frequently so uh, take your time you know build up the process and you will see that also like um, there are a lot of people which use those platforms a little bit in a better way you know? um, the second biggest problem is actually small talk itself you know we really want to practice small talk we want to train this of course we want to learn this but of course at some point you will probably want to create some meaningful conversations and uh, a little bit like you know most of the people probably regard those uh, tools as, as normal social communication tools and therefore it can be sometimes difficult to create uh, meaningful conversations. If you have this problem, a very good workaround is basically to ask awkward, awkward questions basically. You know, I, I mean be nice, nothing mean or something, but uh, for example in the sense of, you know, maybe asking what's your favorite river and why, no? People will be like, what, favorite river? 
maybe this one because I was always hanging out with my friends as I was younger. Now you have instantly a different emotional kind of entrance. You will reach out, uh, have reached out to a topic that you would have not easily reached by just talking about the weather, of course. No? So um, basically, just asking people questions they don't have answers to, make them think, and you will have them engaged. No, so um, yeah, play around a little, a little bit with it. It's a very interesting tool uh, for for language learning, but it's also, of course, a very interesting tool socially. Be nice, but test out games, be creative, no? Why not have fun? And uh, yeah, you will have a very good time on these platforms, of course. The third habit you would actually like to create is a reading habit. Um, um, you know, there is, uh, in language learning, uh, check out Stephen Krashen, um, there is the principle of acquisition, um, you know, basically the fundamental process of you getting comprehensive input and understanding it. This is what drives acquisition. And uh, there is learning. Learning would be really like, for example, grammar learning, you know, explicit grammar teaching and so on, like all the things about the language, basically. You know? So in adult learners, uh, acquisition is 95% and learning is 5%. So we really want to maximize uh, comprehensible input as well, of course. No, but the very big problem there is, of course, that most of the comprehensible input is uh, not interesting and uh, the most interesting things are not comprehensible in the beginning of a language and you know there's also studies which compare content-based learning and non-content-based learning so in the sense of is the content interesting and meaningful to you and if it is it's much more efficient to learn with it basically so um getting comprehensible input and really uh, um, of course interesting input at the same time is something very difficult to do um but there are tools which help us with those a lot so there's for example link and there's for example readlang.com um, compare those two they are both awesome and um, those allow you basically they are a little bit like a combination between a, um, a ebook reader and a translator so now i want to very briefly show you uh, readlang as an example so those platforms were very similar uh, just the communities are very different and uh, so you get a nice introduction to those platforms basically okay well, i will transfer now my screen okay so as i said those platforms are a little bit like a combination between an ebook reader and a translator so this, for example, would be a book in Spanish I uploaded here. So for example, me alegro de entrevistarme con el gran jefe de quien he oído tantos elogios. So for example, if I don't know this, uh, what, what alegro de means, no? I'm glad that, uh -huh. el gran jefe, the big boss, okay, I see. So, so you see where this is already going. No? So um, really in a sense that, that is allows us as well to take vocabulary of the equation. And this is especially awesome because it allows us to have a very nice pleasure reading process. So basically in a sense, you know, like if you're reading something, uh, you should always watch out that you have a, a very nice process reading. Basic rule of thumb, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. So in this sense really as well, that, um, you know, like theoretically, if you, you could theoretically also do this with a dictionary. But of course, if you use a dictionary, you need time to look something up. And those couple of seconds difference rip you straight out of the reading process. So this is making reading a nice and fluent process. And this is really awesome because it allows, it allows us to instantly have very nice content. And, you know, especially with content, you should always watch out that language learning is secondary, that you really want to understand it, basically, you know. So, so German, whatever, you know, I want to understand this. I live in the sense. This is a translator. Never trust a translator in the sense of, you know, they got really good in the last one or two years. But if you have a bad feeling about a translation, just check it here. We have a dictionary included here for this reason. For Spanish, it's basically word reference. For German, it's Leo. So you um, can also change this as well in the settings if you want to, of course. No? So you have your words also saved in context here. So you can select favorites, you can listen to the pronunciation, and you can also, of course, export those, and then, for example, create your own courses on Memrise. It's very, very awesome for specialization as well, for creating lists very fast, and then just check it and uh, um, import it, of course. Um, you can also practice some flashcards here, but I actually, to be honest, I don't do that so much because I just like to have my reading process and my vocabulary pr process pretty much separate. No? We also have like a public library kind of thing going on here, so um, you can select fiction, non-fiction, co songs, conversation, and so on. You can select the difficulty and, of course, the word count. And then, for example, we would have very, have very awesome things here like, uh, well, Goethe, the Gebrüder Grimm, no? um, for example, the Spiegel, Agathe Kriski, Franz Kafka. Well, don't actually read this one. It's not so, such a nice newspaper, but well. Um, yeah, so, oh, and oh, for example, as well, uh, subtitles, of course, no, for series. So, for example, if you want to watch something on Netflix, no, uh, German, with German subtitles, and, you know, there are platforms online where you can download subtitles, basically, 
and then you have a point SRT file. You convert it to TXT and you upload it here. I will put uh, links in the description as well for tools like this. And then you just basically click along and you will have a very nice time understanding already. You know, with, with reading, with, with watching something, with listening to something. It's always very, very important basically that you have a nice process. And if you understand, that's enough. No, you, you, we want to we wanna use language what it's intended to be used for, no? for, for understanding a message basically for um, communication. So if you understand something, that's fine, no? We don't want to translate, we want to understand. So we also have uh, very nice combinations between YouTube and this platform going on. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear this. I will try at least. No? So the people exchange letters. This is, by the way, a very awesome German youth book with a very adult kind of message. It's a very, very beautiful one. Um, it's about time and work and how we spend our lives. So, very beautiful one, no? So, you see where this is already, um, you know, what, what this allows us basically as well. You know, and you can also very easily create those combinations on your own. And I will also post a link down in the description for a tutorial video for this. So, check it if you want to. Um, the most important feature for us is probably that they also have a plugin for Chrome. So, you click here on the plugin. It's recognizing the language, and you instantly have the same functionality pages basically in web pages. This is especially important because you know, like basically, uh, we have uh, three different pillars of the methodology. Um, so basically, first of all, um, the habit creation process, no, thirty days, sixty six days, analytical process, creative process, you know. Um, first of all, a vocabulary slash um, uh, phrase process, of course. Watch out for context. Second of all, of course, a habit, a practical habit, um, in a control process, uh, and third of all, of course, a reading habit, comprehensible input, super crucial as well. And uh, you know, the second pillar kind of would be really that you try step by step to combine German as strong as somehow possible with your everyday life. You know, what could that mean? That could, for example, mean you know, like you want to know um, how to repair that chair. No, check it, check it on a start page, and. Uh, Use basically um, Readlang, the plugin for helpful vocabulary. Basically, you know, you wanna you wanna wanna cook something and you don't have a recipe. Check uh, chefkoch.de and use Readlang as helpful vocabulary. You wanna watch something, you know, um, German German subtitles and maybe using a, a system like Readlang as helpful vocabulary, you know, to take it out to make it understandable, to make it nice to watch. Always watch out that you have nice processes, uh, basically. Of course, everything uh, like like newspapers, uh, like uh, of course everything as well that has a language setting. You know, maybe your mobile, maybe your operating system. Um, if you like gaming, that's awesome. You can change their whole world to German, basically. And let's be honest, we all overuse those systems. So um, basically, you know how to use those systems already. The only thing we're really doing is exchanging not so useful anymore labels against the very useful ones, because you will learn a lot of very crucial. Um, everyday German vocabulary, but just by exposure, you know, like Germans also overuse those systems. So um, try to make it a creative process. But as well, of course, uh, like think about what you do daily and think about what you want to transition, uh, like like the basically um, use for your German and combine with your German. And you know, our little UTP would be really that at some point you do everything in your life in, in, in German or whatever language you want to learn. Um, so basically just just make it a creative process but also be aware of course that all the things we talked about in the habit creation process uh, apply here as well you know if you decide to do something like for example reading a newspaper um be aware basically that you should create a habit with it you should if you decide to read newspapers select the base habit select the time frame that feels ridiculous 30 days 66 days um for example like reading one one five minutes every day a newspaper and if you want to read more because you have a super interesting article and it catches you read more no but if not no, why not so um make it analytical and especially habitual process as well if you decide to combine something with your german uh, in your everyday life no and if it doesn't work out expect it to not work out and if it doesn't work out adapt be analytical about the whole thing basically no um Maybe if you want to, like uh, normally what I normally do with, with, with students as well, and if you're one of my students, maybe, uh, please ask me to do so. Um, normally I like to send a lot of, for example, German material instantly in combination with the interests, basically. But of course I don't have the possibility on YouTube. So basically, maybe write down in the comments what, what language resources you know, what what is the most awesome, maybe list of language resources you know, like for example, oh, these podcasts about space are awesome. Then for example, especially as well, like learning podcasts and so on. Maybe use the comment section as a little bit like, uh, well, 
sharing is caring, no? So um, help yourself out. Community is also crucial with language learning. So try to find your community. Maybe uh, the comment section is a good place to start. Okay, so of course we have now, as I said, a habit creation process um, in combination with everyday life. And the third step would be, of course, classes. No, I can't do that for you now at the moment with YouTube, of course. Um, but uh, for, for your target language, try to find a native speaker or a couple of native speakers, even better, I guess, um, which can help you basically with speaking and which can guide you basically. What I normally do in the classes, the class in my classes are mostly based on conversation with the habits as foundations. And uh, But for example, as well in the sense, for example, if I, uh, you know, like really communicative, communicative language teaching, but for example, as well, if I see that you're struggling with, uh, for example, a, a certain principle, for example, like the German perfect. I would very briefly explain you how the German perfect works, but not in the sense that you then, now you have to, to know it and if, if you don't, uh, you will get up a grade or something. No, more in the sense of in order to create a reference point, you know, so I could give you a like, um, good boost in the right direction and especially to give me uh, the possibility um, basically to enforce it already, you know to for instantly start enforcing it. So for, for example, after that, I would um, ask you very much about the German perfect, like you know, about your past, actually, uh, if you're cool with that. And I would be super annoying with the grammar. You know, you say something, for example, German perfect, and I would be like, wait, 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 structure, structure. And you're like, what, structure? Ah, oh, yeah, there was something, no? So instantly some deliberate practice, basically. So really um, figuring out challenges by conversation and improving those by conversation. And you will see, you know, like starting to communicate, especially in the beginning is always a little bit like walking through mud. But be uh, and sure of that. Basically, it gets. V I see this process a lot of times, and it's getting better very, very fast. You know, and that's always awesome to see. Um, or a little bit like the metro system, maybe. No, it's uh, if you always take the stairs in the metro, it's always easy to take the stairs. And if you uh, always take the escalator, and you once have to take the stairs, it's uh, well difficult and not much fun. So always take the stairs. It's also in common, uh, like in basically in communication. And of course, be aware then in the beginning you won't be um, perfect. It's not about being perfect, it's being. It's about trial and error, no? So basically what drives us forward in learning are errors, no? Be really, really aware that errors are the most important thing in language learning because if you, if you for example, have already some basis in the language you wanna learn and you, um, and you, you're, you're com committing an error, no? Um, that's basically exactly the moment where you're practicing it, no? That's exactly the time, don't be like, don't be like, yeah, practice this at the moment, no? Even if it's a very ba basic principle, whatever. We should reframe it, and hopefully you will have doing so, uh, errors as repetitions. That's what they actually are. If people would know that they need to uh, do a phrase or uh, a word like 20 times wrong, and then they know it forever, ever perfect, no? For, for eternity, everybody would be like, yeah, another error, basically. I'm one step closer to knowing it, actually. But, but just because this number is uncertain, people are like, ah, I'm still not there, no? So don't be that. Try out things you know be 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 um be creative have fun with the language play around no don't worry about mistakes um worry about moving forward no so don't worry about not knowing something yet um also always try never to fall back uh, to the to the to another language you have in common with with the native speaker i know that this is also very hard in the beginning but for example in german there would be tools like for example like was bedeutet in, in Deutsch, English, Spanish, Russisch, whatever. No? So basically what means something in a language. No? And this tool, if you have a native speaker with you, this allows you to unlock all conversational topics um, basically um, just by using the native speaker as a, as a tool basically in order to take vocabulary of the equation. No? And if you ask enough questions, you can talk about everything. No? And then for example, if you if you want to say something, no? Um, so for example, uh, ich fahre mit dem, ich fahre mit dem, uh, was bedeutet, no? So uh, I drive with the, I drive with the, uh, what means, for example, the train in German, no? What means the train in German? And, and then you get the answer of the native speaker, hopefully, and uh, then you can form the sentence, no? Or for example, if the native speaker is saying something to you, and you could, for example, like ask, was bedeutet, uh, in English, no? So like what means something in English? So you could, for example, ask for the train and then you understand it, no? And for example, as well, uh, like phrases like ich verstehe nicht, kannst du das bitte wiederholen? I don't understand, can you please repeat that? Uh, or uh, I don't understand, can you please write that? For example, he's saying something or she's saying something and you're like, uh, no, <laughs> not yet. Can you please repeat that? They repeat it a little bit more precise, a little bit more detail and uh, you don't uh, really understand still. So just ask them to write it in the Skype chat or whatever system you like using. Um, and uh, then, no, 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 ah, 
Und dann, was bedeutet? So, what means, you know? And then you have unlocked everything, basically. So never fall back to your language uh, you have in common, you know? Even if it's uh, very easy to do so in the beginning. But this is the process. It's a little bit like walking through mud in the beginning, you know? And uh, don't worry, it will get better very, very fast. So, so don't worry much about it. There's also um, uh, a lot of very awesome German or in general learning podcasts. I will post my selection down in the description for German, basically. Um, there's a very awesome uh, uh, website, which is called Fluent U, which has a lo awesome list for those kind of things. And I will post, post it down there. Maybe you want to um, uh, post your favorite podcast and your favorite learning content, as I said, in the comment section. And um, yeah, so we just can share a little bit of content together and maybe creating a little hub for um, well, starting off with a language uh, in here as well. Okay, so I think I got everything. Um, basically, yeah, if you have any questions or if something comes to my mind after recording this video, which probably will be the case, I will post it down in the comments. comments. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or want to maybe create a like language learning community with other people, so for example, you search, uh, um, um, basically um, help for, for learning Spanish or whatsoever or you want to learn Russian and you search for people who do the same and who want to practice a little bit with you or whatsoever um, just post it down in the comments and I'm sure you will find somebody with um, well yeah you will be good I guess so if you have any questions just write me also feel free to of course um, write me in general or I talk to you if you want to um, or better maybe Skype but yeah, I will, I will maybe post uh, down my Skype name in the, in the description and you can just write me if you want to. Um, well, yeah, you will see. So I hope this was a little bit helpful for you and this was a, a good start for you to get going with a language. And yeah, mm, I hope this was helpful. Have a very, very, very nice day. And uh, yeah, 